name is、uh, Christian, and I'm going to be talking about Japanese linguistics in Lucene and Solar today. Briefly introduce myself. I've been working with a commercial search engine for some ten years. I've been with a company called Fast.、Uh, I was five years in Fast R&D department in Norway, building bits and pieces of、uh, the Fast ESP search engine. And I spent five years with Fast in Tokyo doing solution delivery, technology sales, and R and D, and variety of things. Fast has、um, been acquired by Microsoft, as、uh, as many of you know. I left the company、uh, shortly thereafter, and I founded Attilica in、um, fall of two thousand and nine. So we basically. We help our clients innovate using search and related technologies and our own good ideas. So we are proficient in the fields of information retrieval, natural language processing, and big data analytics. So we are based in Tokyo, but we have clients everywhere. And I'm also、um, a newbie, Lucene and Solar Committee, that was voted in 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 February. And I've been mostly working on Japanese language support in Lucene and Solar. So, if you want to contact me for whatever reason, feel free to write me on these email addresses or grab me here at the conference. The, the latter is is great. So, in today's talk, we'll cover three major topics. So, I'll give you a crash course in Japanese. Uh, I'll teach you how to order beer and toast. It's very important in Japan. It will get you very, very far. Judging from the audience, I can see that some of you might know that already, and some of you I know really know how to do that. <laughs> and then we're also going to、uh, talk about Japanese language processing in general, what some of the challenges are, and I'll introduce to them the Japanese writing system. And then we will talk about the, the Japanese features in Lucene and Solar. And I think we should have time for for Q and A. So Japanese one hundred and one, ordering a beer. This is how you order a beer in Japanese. Beer kudasai. And then after you receive your beer, you thank for the beer and you say "arigatou gozaimasu," which means "thank you very much." So now you have a beer. You're thankful for your beer, and then you do "come by." When these kanji literally mean "dry cup," so it means basically means bottoms up. So if we look,、um, it's a little bit more. Complicated or larger example. JR 新宿駅の近くにビールを飲みに行こうか。So this means, shall we go for a beer near Shin, JR 新宿 station? So if we look at that last sentence,、so、we can see here that we have.、Um, Various kinds of scripts or characters. We have some、uh, some things we recognize of these things over here, and then we have a lot of other characters and things.、So、we have some complicated things. We have some round, some simpler round shaped things, and we have some simpler, more pointy things. So let's review some of them. Scripts that are being used as part of the Japanese writing system. So these are romaji Latin characters. These in Japanese are typically used for proper nouns. And here we have、um, katakana script, which is a phonetic script, and it's typically used for loan words. In this case, beer. And we have Chinese characters, kanji, and they are typically used for stems and proper nouns. And then we have hiragana. That's also a phonetic script. 
it's sort of similar to katakana in that sense, but if you look at the details, it's, it's not exactly the same. But hiragana is used for inflections and particles, typically. So in Japanese, we have these four writing systems. So getting back to our sentence, what are the words in this sentence? We don't have any blank characters that separate words that we have with Western languages. So in Japanese, words are implied, and they are immediately understood by the, by the speaker or the, or the native Japanese person. Which brings us to the question in the context of search. How do we index this? What are the words? A search engine needs to know what the terms are and what the words are so that we can index them and search for them. So what we need to do in order to search Japanese, we need to segment this text into tokens before we can search it. So how do we do that? We have two major approaches. One is called engramming, which is a very simple approach. And the other is called morphological analysis, which is a more sophisticated statistical approach. And we'll go through both. So n-gramming is basically taking input text and chunking it up into um, the number of characters n which in this case is two. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this text and we're going to compose tokens of two characters each according to a very obvious pattern that I'll, I'll show you right here. I think it's easier, easier to just visualize it rather than explain it with words. So n is two, we are emitting these two first characters as our first token. And then we move on to the next character and get these two characters. So this becomes our next token. And then we continue like this. Following this pattern. So this is n-gramming with n, n equals 2, which is also called bigramming. So after we have bigrammed this sentence, these are the tokens or words that we index and make searchable. But there are some problems with this. So with these n-grams, if we take a closer look at these words, we'll see that this word here, JR, that's a reasonable word. In Japan, it typically means Japan Railways. But this token here, it's not a word. This Shinjuku is a word. There's a place in Tokyo. This uh, Jukueki is a word, but it's, it's a different word. It's a word with a different semantics. This can mean post town, relay station, or something like that, which is different from Shinjuku, the place in Tokyo where we were going to go for beer. So here we are seeing that this token actually, we get a new word into our index after this n-gramming process. And following on, we are seeing that this is not a word, this is not a word, this is a word. So to summarize some of the problems with n-gramming is that they do not perceive the meaning very well and sometimes or often change semantics of the, of the words in the sentence. And this has a very negative impact on ranking. More specifically, our, our search precision. So we get many false positives. 
we search for something and we get many irrelevant search results. And that's something we don't like. It also generates many terms per document or query, which impacts on index size and performance. So it's also undesired from that point of view. But still, there are some applications where this is appropriate. For example, in compliance applications, we, where we want to make sure that we don't miss any search results, any hits in the search results. So it, we, we don't care if we get irrelevant results, but we really, really care that we don't miss any hits. Also in e-commerce applications with funky product names, with maybe lots of punctuation characters and, and non-word-like things, they might have good use. If we move on to the, to the second approach, morphological analysis, if we take this input and we do morphological analysis, and then we get these tokens. And these tokens align very well with, with what a Japanese speaker would consider words in this sentence. So these, these, these tokens reflect what a Japanese speaker would, would expect as words. And this approach, as I mentioned, is statistical. It's a machine-learned statistical approach. So in technical terms, what we are doing here, we are basically decoding CRFs using Viterbi. And morphological analysis allows all, us also to analyze the, 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 the input much deeper. So we can do part of speech tagging, which is the process of recognizing um, if a, if a if a word is a, is a verb, is this a noun, is this a particle, is this an adjective, and we can also extract readings for kanji and so on. So several statistical models are avail available for this with very high accuracy. So but how does this actually work, this statistical approach thing. And I thought I should show you a little demo of that. So this demo is available on a server that's, that's running in, in Tokyo. So here we have a text field and I will input some text here. Let's see. Sushi ga tabetai. This means I want to eat sushi. So if I click tokenize here, we are seeing that one token, one word for each line in the output here. But behind the scenes, if we click this, so now this data is going to take a round trip to Tokyo and, and half a megabyte of SVG is going to come back, so it, it might take us a little bit of time, but let's see. Oh, here we go. So what we have here is, um, is, is, is a graph that represents all the possible segmentations of this input according to our statistical model. So we're seeing here some su, the first kanji character, the sushi here as one character, and there are all the variants here. So the first step of our algorithm basically builds a build this sort of graph, which we call a lattice. And it has weights. And if we follow the shortest path from this start node here to the end node over here, we will get the most likely segmentation of these, of this input according to our statistical model. So that's how it sort of works behind the Things. So if we take our, our, our Shinjuku sentence where 
drinking beer and so on, and we run this. Let's see how long this takes. Here we go. So we can see, it, it's hard to see here, but you can see the, you can see that this quickly becomes very, very complex. So what the, what the algorithm does is builds this huge lattice, and then it finds this sorted path. So that's how it works logically. How this actually works in our implementation, it's much more clever. It does this in a streaming fashion. It only builds the part of the model uh, of, the, of the lattice where there is ambiguity. So our implementation in, in Solar is actually very efficient. Okay, moving on. So I'm going to talk about some of the Japanese language support we have in Lucene and Solar now. And then as part of this, we'll deep dive into some of the other issues that we, that we need to take care of when searching Japanese. Japanese in Lucene and Solar is a, is a new feature in 3.6. It's available out of the box. You don't need to install anything in particular to use it. It's, it's there. And we hope it's, it's easy to use with, with good and reasonable uh, defaults. And we think it provides very sophisticated Japanese linguistics capabilities. And I th think the Japanese support we have in Lucene and Solar now is better than any of the Japanese language support that I've seen in any commercial search engine. And if you know any commercial search engine that has better Japanese language support than Lucene and Solar, please let me know. Then I have some new features to develop. It's also customizable. So how do we use this? So who here are familiar with uh, Lucene and have done programming using Lucene? Excellent. So to use Japanese with Lucene, you just use Japanese Analyzer. That's it. Easy. If you're using Solar, using a new field type that's called text underscore JA in the example schema XML. That's it. It's there. It's ready to be used. So I'll show it to you. So here I have a solar admin page. It's a little small, perhaps. I'll move over to analysis. And we are going to process some Japanese texts. So the name of our field type is text underscore JA. Take this, this text here. We can process it. This is what we get. So this is available out of the box in, in Solar. I haven't changed any configuration. Text underscore J is already there. So what we're seeing here is we are getting, we are seeing the output of the Japanese tokenizer. We're seeing the segmentation of, of uh, our input, which looks very nice. We're also seeing part of speech tags here. We're also seeing readings, and these readings are also available in English. We're also seeing uh, inflection types. So all these things here, they are available as token attributes that you can use in your own application. We're also seeing a base form here. So this is the dictionary form of the 
this tag in there. There's no me. So to use it is already there. You can open up schema XML in uh, example solar conf. Find it. Here we have a field type called text underscore CJK. This is something you can use if you want to use bigramming. If you want to use morphological analysis, use this chap here, text underscore JA. So there's lots of, uh, there, are, yeah, there are lots of comments and, and things here that can help you get started. And I will also get uh, some data up on the up on the wiki that adds more information to this. So in order then to to use it, define your own fields. So here I define two fields, title and body, with type text underscore JA, and that's it. Then you have very good Japanese language support. Okay, so let's go through some of the, the features that we that we have and, and let's do this in terms of the text underscore JA analyzer chain. So these are basically the, the processing chain that is being performed when we process Japanese texts. So our tokenizer, Japanese tokenizer, it segments Japanese texts into tokens and it has token attributes for part of speech tags and base forms, readings, etc. It does something uh, very cool, which is called compound segmentation for Japanese, which we'll get back to in a bit. Segmentation is also easily customizable using user dictionaries. If you don't like the, what the statistical model does out of the box, you can easily override that. This base form filter basically does adjective and verb lemmatization by reduction. So we'll get back to that a bit later. We have a stop filter that does stop wording based on part of speech tags. We have a CJK width filter that does character width normalization. We'll get back to details on that. We remove stop words. So this is based, this stop word dictionary is based on the popular terms on big Japanese Wikipedia. We also have a katakana stem filter that deals with uh, common Japanese spelling variations. And then we have a lowercase filter that just lowercases our term. So, some more details on how these things work. Compound nouns. How do we deal with them? These words here, this Kansai Koksai Kuko and Senior Software Engineer, these tend to become, these are considered for the most part one word by the statistical model that we are using and most Japanese morphological analyzers. So, but in terms of it mean, in terms of search, what this mean is, is that when we search for the word kuko, which means airport, we don't get a hit for Kansai International Airport, which is not what we would like from a good search engine. So how do we deal with this? We basically also need to segment the compounds. So what we're doing, we're using a heuristic to implement this. So remember there's this lattice that you saw with all the, doing the, all the shortest pass things? What we're doing is, is we are adding some penalty to, to long sequence of um, um, nodes that have words with many characters. So we sort of penalize them. So the, so the Viterbi path will, uh, will go through some of the shorter uh, terms if they exist. So after doing that in these cases, we get Kansai and Senior, International and Software and Airport and Engineer as we would expect. 
So this is very cool. And uh, this is one of the unique features that uh, that Kuromoji in, in Lucene and Solar has. But we're doing one more thing. When we index this, We are segmenting the compound Kansai Koksai Kuko into Kansai Koksai and Kuko, which is good for recall because we can now then get a match for Kuko if we search. But we are keeping the compound itself as a synonym. This is very good for precision because we will the ranking function in, in Lucene will give an exact hit, a big boost because of inverse document frequencies. So basically, the, the approach that we're doing it, using here is uh, both good for, for both pre precision and recall for overall good ranking. So Japanese tokenizer doesn't actually return just the sequence of tokens. It actually returns a graph because it can return multiple tokens in each position. So in this case here, it returns two. And these are treated as synonyms. So how do we do with the character widths? So in Japanese, characters have, have widths, which is uh, these two. This text on the left is, is different from the text on the right. The text on the right is in full width characters, and these are in half width characters. And in order to match them, if you search for Lucene in, in full width, we need, want to match Lucene in half width. So we need to normalize this somehow. So we do that using the CJK width filter. So this is a sort of fast Unicode NFKC subset. So we normalize full width um, Romaji to half width, and half width Katakana to full width, and numbers, we normalize them to half width. They are treated the same as as the other raw module letters. So after doing this normalization, we can match. It doesn't matter if you're searching using full width or half width, things will work. You'll get the matching you expect. Good question. I think documented, documents are produced in, uh, in, in various of these um, widths. So search engines need to deal with them. So <coughs> I, 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 I'm not sure I have a better answer than that. Do you have a good answer to, anyone have a good answer to that? Ah, thanks a lot for that. Um, question over there? Let, yeah, we can do some questions. Yeah, we, we the the case in the casing issue is additional to this actually. So in Japanese, we also have common, some, we have many spelling variations with, for katakana words, but one in particular is one where there's a ending long sound. So all these, all these Japanese words here, they are perfectly valid spellings for the English word manager. So in order to search this in, in the same way, and also have have the the TFIDF scores for these uh, words unified, so so they are treated differently from a ranking point of view. We normalize them, and we can use the Japanese katakana stem filter to do that. So it has a threshold value, so it doesn't that's configurable, so it doesn't deal with very short words. But it basically stems this by removing the the long vowel sound in the end. 
So Japanese adjectives and verbs are also highly inflected, which is a, something we'd better deal with if we want search to work well. So this word here means to buy. These words here, they are inflected forms of to buy. So it's like in English, a simple example is running. If the document contains the word running, you want to be able to search that document by using the word search them run. So it's the same issue. But the degree of inflections that we have in Japanese is much, much bigger than Western languages. It's maybe it's even more than Latin. So how do we deal with this? We have a Japanese base form filter that normalizes these things. So whenever we discover any of, any of these variants, the term we index is this. We also have user dictionaries that can override uh, the segmentation uh, in the st statistical model that we are using. So we have decided to use a very, very simple format for this. So there's no need to assign term weights, etc. It's you just write the the surface form, the segmentation, and reading and part of speech tag that you'd like to use. And this is the what this is what the the analyzer will use. So basically, if you add something in here, that's the segmentation that the tokenizer will use. So that's useful to to override the statistical model. So for example, there's a sumo wrestler here, Asa Shoryu. His name, these kanji have a irregular reading. So the statistical model doesn't know about this, and we can teach it this by adding this entry here with this custom reading. What? Yes. Yes, that's, that's fine. You can load lots of them. And if there's a problem, that's a bug. And then I'll fix it for you. But that should be fine. So we're using the same data structure for this that for the, for the statistical model, the, the basically the, the other dictionary the, with all the known words. We're using FSTs. Does, are you sure? So that's one of the things that we're going to improve for 4.0. We'll get back to that. But I think the, the, the basic the decompiling that we're doing is, is OK. It's not perfect, because we are sort of hacking or overriding the statistical model, which is bad for your engineering karma. You shouldn't do it too much. But it seems to work OK. Hmm. We are just simply, yeah, so I'm happy, to, I'm happy to explain how we do that. But it's basically, it's a very, very simple penalization. It's very simple heuristic. But it turns out to be very effective. We have, we have some unit test coverage to, to make sure that these things, that we track these things. So if we make any changes, we can, we can uh, that, that, we, that we don't introduce any, any issues. But it's not perfect, but it's, it's, it's quite OK. So these are some of the things we'll focus on in 4.0. So we will make an improved um, search mode for katakana compounds. We will also improve the word segmentation. We will add character filters for dates and numbers and odology, repetition marks. And we'll also get a Japanese spell checker in there. Like to thank these people. And let's do QA if you have more questions. I want to understand what is your approach uh, with other non Western uh, languages, such as Thai, Chinese, Malay, uh, yet Hindi, maybe. Uh, is it something you can replicate 
is there somebody at the uh, Apache Foundation who is taking in charge the uh, ASEAN uh, languages? Because you did a great job on this, okay? Uh, some of our languages, let's come back for Python. On Python, you have four levels in your letter. So each language is a subject in itself. To, to be honest, I, I know a little bit about Japanese, but for other Asian languages, I don't know so much. But there's a guy back there called Robert Muir in the corner over there. He is really the, he is, he is the key language guy in, uh, in the Lucene community. So, so but basically I, I don't know for the other languages, but there are some, some things in, in Kuromoji that Robert and I have been talking about reusing for Chinese. Okay, thanks a lot.